In the previous tutorial, we wrote this example that displays some text. In this program, the first seven lines of code before, before the first call to the present method are essentially setting things up. In the first block of code, we created a text object and set some of its properties. Then we created a picture object and added a picture part to it. This is a very simple program involving only two objects, a picture object and a text object. In a more complicated experiment, many more objects may be needed. You might imagine that, in that case, the start of the program would contain a lot of code used to create objects and set up their initial state. Presentation offers an alternative to writing that type of setup code. Instead, you can write out a description of the initial state of the objects you will be using in a format called the Scenario Description Language, or SDL. SDL is not a programming language. Instead, SDL is simply a way to list the objects being used and what their initial state should be when the scenario starts running. The SDL portion of the scenario is placed between the begin and begin PCL statements. Anything between those two statements must be in SDL. Anything after begin PCL must be PCL. Let's take a look at our text object first and try replacing the first section of our example code with an SDL statement to define that text object. As we do this, remember that although SDL may sometimes look similar to PCL, you should not try to interpret things in SDL as if they were PCL statements. First, we write the type of object, opening and closing curly braces, and then a variable name. When presentation sees an SDL statement like this, it will do two things. First, it creates a PCL variable of type text with the name intro. That variable can be used in your PCL program just as if you had declared the variable yourself at the beginning of your program. Second, when the program is run, presentation creates a text object sets up its initial properties and stores a reference to that object in the associated PCL variable. In between the curly braces, we can define the initial value of properties. This is done by writing a parameter name, equal sign, and then the value we'd like to set. Here we are setting the caption property to the string hello, the font size to 48, and the font color to 25500 red. Now that we have an SDL statement, defining the text object, we can remove the PCL code that essentially did the same thing. Note that while in the PCL code we had to use the text redraw method, when you, you use SDL to create a text object, presentation will by default create the graphic surface when it is setting up the initial state of the object. Therefore, we can even remove the call to the redraw method. Note that we are still using the intro variable, the name of our text object, in the PCL program, even though we are no longer declaring it in PCL. This is valid because the SDL statement causes presentation to create that variable for you. You can now run this scenario again and see that it is the same thing as the first version which had no SDL. To see what a particular SDL object definition should look like, you can look in the documentation for that object type. In the SDL syntax section, we can see a description of the general format we used. In our case, the name was intro and the parameter definition section consisted of three definition statements. For each parameter definition, we can look at the description of the property we want to set. Looking at the caption property, we see an SDL parameter which shows the parameter name that should be used in SDL definitions. In the case of the three properties we are setting, the SDL parameter is identical to the property name, which will be the case most of the time, but not always. Semicolons are required after each parameter definition, as well as after the entire object definition statement. 
Next, let's try to create the picture object using SDL as well. Looking at the picture reference page, the SDL syntax is more complicated than for text. This is because, in addition to parameter definitions, we can also list the parts going into the picture. Our picture only has one part, the text object. The picture part declaration consists of the type of part followed by the name. After that, we need to specify the location of that part. Here we define X and Y, which specify the location of the center of the part. This is equivalent to the second and third arguments we used in the call to the picture add part method when we set this up in PCL. Now that we have created the picture object and variable in SDL, we can remove that from the original program. You can run the program again and verify that it still does the same thing. The picture part declaration we used consists of the type name and the object name, since we had already defined the text object. In cases like this, where an object is listed inside the definition of another object, we can instead place the entire object definition there. As you can see, this approach is equivalent to what we used previously, where the text object was defined before the picture object. Since they are equivalent, you can choose whichever method appears clearer to you. We think of SDL as a useful convenience for creating objects and find scenarios that use SDL to define objects to be slightly more readable than those that do not. SDL allows a clear separation between parts of a scenario that are just setting things up and the PCL program which actually performs a task. Also, using SDL may make it easier for you to visualize what objects are being created and what their initial state is. However, essentially everything that can be done in SDL can be done equivalently using PCL, so what you choose to do in SDL is up to you. You might compare our final scenario with our starting point which used no SDL and decide which one you prefer. There are a few other conveniences provided by SDL that you can use to create objects such as templates. You can read more about those in the presentation documentation.